Vedabhumi, the land of knowledge, that is one of the names of India and for a very good reason. If we turn the hidden pages of the history, long before the Islamic invasions and the European colonization, India has been one of the very few civilizations which has a very advanced education system of that times. I'm not saying this. If we turn back the pages of the history before 1000 AD, that's before Mughal invasions and the European colonization began, travelers from Europe, Persia to China used to travel to India to obtain the knowledge as part of this Vedic culture. If you read the books written by Magasthenes, Albruni or Hyun Sang, you'll get to know how advanced Indian education system at that time was. The knowledge of ancient India. It is one of the most comprehensive and complex education systems in the world. In this short video, we try to compile how the ancient Indian education system looked like. The heritage of the ancient Indian education and value system as we know today has been largely preserved by the inscriptions on the temples manuscripts and verbally transmitted from a teacher to a student. These are the three main sources from which we have been preserving the Vedic education system till today. Now let's see what they are. For ease of understanding, we have put it this way. There are six broad categories of Indian scriptures which hold the entire knowledge system. They are Shruti, Smriti, Purana, Itihasam, Agamam, Siddhantam. And they cover a diverse set of fields of education like mathematics, physics, biology, philosophy, astronomy, health sciences, linguistics, and many other branches of science and technology besides the theological concepts. Starting with the first one, Shruti. Shruti is well known as the Vedas, and there are four of them. Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Sama Veda, and Adharvana Veda. Rig means praise, a form of expressing the gratitude. It explains about the various hymns praising the elements of nature and cosmos. And the second one is Yajur Veda. Yajur means worship. It explains about different procedures of worship of the nature and cosmos. And the third one is Sama Veda. Sama means song. It gives a music driven canonical format to the other Vedas for ease of recitation. The fourth one is Adharvana Veda. Adharva means stable mind. It sets the rules for a steady state daily life activities that needs to be observed in a Vedic culture. All these four Vedas are not just like any other four ordinary books. You will not understand a word of it unless you are blessed with a guru who can explain to you what each of these mean and they are highly interconnected with each other. Further down, if we look into any of these four Vedas, it has four fundamental blocks. Aranika, Brahmana, Samhita, Upanishad supported by six external blocks Siksha, Vyakarana, Chandas, Nirukta, Jyotisha and Kalpa. We'll keep it very simple, not going to further details. The four internal blocks of Aranika, Brahmana, Samhita and Upanishads, they describe the theosophical, philosophical and physiological anatomy of the cosmos and the nature and the fundamentals of human existence. In simple words, it describes Brahman, which means the ultimate and the supreme power of the existence. In the six external blocks, Siksha, Vyakarana, Chandas, Nirukta, Jyotisha and Kalpa, these are called as Vedangas. They complement the knowledge framework of Vedas with different and intricate specializations each. As you see here, Siksha is study of phonetics, Vyakarana is study of grammar, Chandas is study of linguistic rhythm and prosody, Nirukta is study of etymology, Jyotisha is study of astronomy and Kalpa is study of rituals. All these six are called as Vedangas. And that's how the four Vedas are supported by the six Vedangas. And that is not all. Each of the four Vedas have four Upavedas as an offspring. Ayurveda, the study of life sciences ascribing to Rig Veda. Gandharva Veda, study of music, art and dance ascribing to Sama Veda. Dhanur Veda, study of archery and warfare ascribing to Yajur Veda. And Ardhashastra, study of business administration and political sciences ascribing to Adharvana Veda. Now this is the complete picture of what we call today in simple words as Vedas. And one of our prime objectives of this channel, Project Shivoham, is to bring forward this entire knowledge system in a simple format that everybody can understand. We already did a couple of documentaries on Dhanurvedam, Ayurvedam, Sanskrit and a lot more. And you can find them on our channel. And the next one is Smruti. Smruti is authored by the sages and saints who mastered Shruti, which is the Vedas, and brought in their experiences and revelations. It is much like a thesis that the sages on different branches of studies like theology, philosophy, science, etc. It completely subserves or ascribes to Shruti, which is the final authority. And there are 18 such Smritis written by different rishis. And they are Atri, Vishnu, Harita, Aushanasi, Angirasa, Yama, Apastambha, Samavarta, Katyayana, Brihaspati, Parashara, Vyasa, Shankha, Likita, Daksha, Gautama, Shatatapa and Vasistha Smriti. 
And the next one is Puranam. In very simple words, Puranam is nothing but a historical document. Often Puranam is mistaken as a mythology, but the fact of the matter is it's a historical document that has a 10 dimensional feature. And the 10 are, the first one is Sarga, history of creation of cosmos. Second one is Visarga, history of creation of the worlds. Third, Vrupti, history of evolution of the life. Fourth, Raksha, history of sustenance of life. Fifth, Amtarani, history of the time scale and how the time used to be measured in the past. Sixth, Vamsa. Seventh, Vamsanucharita. Both explain about the history of the lineage and the history of the dynasties that ruled Bharat since times immemorial. Eighth, Samstha, history of the catastrophes, all the natural calamities that have occurred in the past. Ninth, Hetu, history of the prime causes of those catastrophes. And the last one is Apasarayaha, history of the supreme being or the different incarnations of God. And there are 18 such Puranas, all written by just one Rishi, Sri Veda Vyasa. And the 18 are Markandai Purana, Masya Purana, Bhagavata, Bhavishya, Brahmanda, Brahma, Brahma Vaivarta, Vishnu, Varaha, Vamana, Vayu, Agni, Narada, Padma, Linga, Garuda, Kurma and Skanda Puranas. The amount of knowledge in these Puranas is just incredible. For instance, Agni Puranam explains about different varieties of martial arts. We did a short documentary on Dhanurvedam extracting details from Agni Puranam and Dhanurveda Samhita. You can check out on our channel. The next one in line is Itihasa. Itihasa, the word spells as Itihasa, which means this is how it happened. Of all the scriptures, Itihasas are the one which shaped up the ethos of India as we know today. And there are only two Itihasas, Sri Ramayanam and Mahabharatam. These two scriptures are of the highest order which defined, directed and drived the human values in India since thousands of years. And Bhagavad Gita, which is the epitome of all the sacred scriptures, is an integral part of the grand epic of Mahabharatam. And the next one is Agamas. Agamas are treaties on theology, epistemology and also describes the architectural principles of temple construction. Basically they are the rule books of how a temple needs to be constructed and the rituals in the temple needs to be organized. All the magnificent grandeur of the Indian temples and the exquisite carvings that we have on the Indian temples. The source code of all the beauty is from Agamas. For instance, Shilpa Shastra, the branch of knowledge which deals with sculpting is from Agamas. And there are 77 Shakti Agamas, 28 Shiva Agamas and 108 Vishnu Agamas. So wide and so deep. And the last one we have Siddhantam. Siddhantam means principles. A set of principles in different fields of science and technology. This is the most interesting part of the scriptures. For instance, in astronomy itself we have 18 Siddhantas which talks about different different details about planetary motions, geometrical principles, trigonometry, calculus, a lot more. In this category, we have a huge set of scriptures that are in the fields of science and technology. To name a few, Sushiruta Samhita by Rishi Sushiruta on surgery and medicine, Aryabhattiyam by Aryabhatta on astrophysics and astronomy, Ardhashastra by Chanikya on commerce and business administration, Panchashiddhanta by Varaha Mihira on treaties of astronomy, Rasendra Mangalam by Nagarjuna on the science of alchemy, and the list goes on and on. And that is a very brief history about the Vedas and the other scriptures of ancient Indian education system. For ease of understanding, we tried to condense a lot, but it is so wide, deep and complex all at the same time. And the backbone for this entire education system is Samskrutam. And if we don't have the competence of Samskrutam, all this knowledge system is good for nothing. Let me give you one example and you will understand it. Here is a slokam from Aryabhattiya, written by Aryabhatta. Yes, the same man whom we celebrate that he invented zero. In this slokam, he gave two scenarios. The first scenario is two bodies moving in opposite directions and the second scenario is two bodies moving in same direction. He says that time elapsed for R and B to pass through or otherwise is equal to the distance by some of their speeds. And in the other scenario, it is distance by difference of the speeds. In simple words, he gave the equation of speed is equal to distance by time. This equation of speed is equal to distance by time is the foundation for kinematics, a branch of physics, which is the heart and soul of everything that moves in this world. This equation is the foundation in the engineering of be it a car or a space shuttle. This equation is a revolutionary discovery. But if we don't know how to read Samskritam, all this is good for nothing. 
According to the documented history, Galileo Galilei, in the year 1638, he published a book called Two New Sciences. In this book, he first gave the formula of speed is equal to distance by time. Now, don't start judging Galileo. All his work is original, and if you read this book, you'll get to know he did not get inspired from Aryabhatta. But the fact of the matter is, something that was discovered by Aryabhatta in 510 CE had to be rediscovered by Galileo in the year 1638. In these thousand years. the speed is equal to distance by time equation which is written in sanskritam is locked up in aryabhatiya 1000 years imagine what could have been the impact if this was known earlier to the whole world all we know about aryabhatta is he invented zero but he has left us a wealth of information well how many such equations and other scientific concepts are hidden in the indian scriptures which are written in sanskritam waiting to be decoded well i'm not saying that all the great things in this world were invented or discovered by indians but all the great things that were done by indians are not known to the world and that's why we started project shivoham to bring forward all these kinds of stories and as always thanks for watching